welcome to Garden Style. So I thought I would share a project with you that I've been super excited about for the last two weeks to finally get going. I have had a wicked tree stump here in the middle of my yard. I had several of them removed last week, but I decided I wanted to keep this one and actually make it a centerpiece in the yard. So today I'm going to share with you how to dress up a tree stump with a beautiful cobalt blue glaze pot. I've already transplanted a corkscrew willow in the middle of it. It uh, transferred from a small pot that I had on the deck and now I've moved it here to this larger one. Now I love corkscrew willows because of their branches and they are exactly like a corkscrew. They grow in a twisted shape uh, and the branches after they've lost their leaves are actually very much sought after with florists. And those twigs that you find a lot of times with the lights intertwined in them during Christmas, a lot of times are corkscrew willow twigs. Now I came across this willow actually at a flower show. And what they were were just branches that were bunched together in a rubber band. Now willows are super easy to root. And that's exactly how I got this particular willow was I took the branches from the flower show and this was like in February put them in some water and it wasn't a week later they were already getting their roots and then I just let them root and at that point it was like March or April I went ahead and transplanted them into a pot on the deck and that was about two years ago and needless to say it's outgrown its little pot out on the deck so I decided to move it to a bigger pot and I'll probably leave it in here for a couple of years so it was really easy to come across a thriller for the middle of this pot but I thought I would uh, just share this little project with you today and you can follow along with me as I go to plant it today and uh, give you an idea how you can design a tree stump in the middle of your yard. <laughs> so some of the plants I'm going to be using today, one of them is a Coreopsis and I really like this particular one because of the petals. They uh, are just very unique, they almost look like a spoon shaped petal. This is very much a sun-loving perennial, so it will come back year after year, and I'll be planting three of those into the pot, just because I thought the yellow was, just looked amazing with the cobalt blue. And cobalt blue glazed pots are my favorites anyway, um, just due to the fact it doesn't seem to matter what color plant you put in them, they always just look good in it. Uh, it is by far my favorite color when it comes to glazed pots. The other plant I'm going to be putting in there, look at that amazing color. This is a Campanula, and these come in all sorts of sizes and shapes and a couple different colors, usually a lavender blue or white. They're available either way. But I wanted something that was really going to be bushy, it's going to fill out, and this will bloom during most of the year as long as you keep it trimmed. You trim off some of the dead flowers, it'll just keep coming back over and over and over again throughout the summer. So you get some serious mileage out of these. And the same goes with the Coreopsis, and look how beautiful they are together. So those will be my filler plants that go in the center. And then of course, to fill in holes, I'm utilizing a Supertunia. <laughs> and I always laugh when I hear that name, Supertunia. I think of a petunia with a cape on for some reason. <laughs> like they're superheroes. And they actually are superheroes. As you can see, this guy is just trying really hard to get trailed over his little teeny tiny pot. But they're going to end up on the edges so that they will actually end up trailing down the edge of the pot. And the other one that I chose was a uh, Calabricoa, uh, the Million Bells, and this is like the cousin to the Petunia that I sh just showed you. And they have mini capes. <laughs> they're actually the mini superheroes. And I just thought that that color would also look amazing with the cobalt blue. So I'm going to combine all these into this pot and uh, you guys can just follow along with me and uh, I'll do a panoramic view as soon as I'm done. So let's get started.
Okay, so I've got it all watered in, and now I am going to start on the tree stump. So what I did was I actually edged out a circle all the way around the stump, and I'm getting ready to plant some really cool perennial grasses. This particular one is called Northern Lights, and I really like it. Uh, number one, it doesn't get out of control and grow like crazy, um, and I can keep control over it. It definitely takes full sun. It can also be in part sun, but I like it because it'll get fairly tall. It gets these really cool seed heads on it as you get towards the end of the summer, and uh, it just makes a nice fluffy type filler to around the tree stump so that I can uh, camouflage it. And it'll also help soften the hard surface of the pot. So I'm going to be using these, and then sporadically I'm also going to be planting in what I call Veronica. This is such a cool perennial. <laughs> they have these neat spiky flowers in purple, and they usually bloom about May to June. And if you trim them back after they're done blooming, they will actually come back and bloom for you again. Uh, extremely hardy perennial, definitely for full sun, but a beautiful purple, as you can see there, to help kind of mimic the color in the pot. So I got two or three of those I'm going to be putting around the tree stump. And then, of course, petunias. <laughs> And I chose annuals this year just because I want to give these grasses and the veronicas a chance to grow in a little bit. And you, you just never know how big they're going to get. So to add more color and have instant gratification <laughs> for this summer, I also chose petunias. And these again are the super tunias, the super wave. So they will actually help to fill in this entire bed before the end of the summer. It'll just be gorgeous. So I just thought they would be a really cool combination with the blue, as well as the blue in the pot. And it'll also help mimic the colors of the calabricoas, these little guys that I put in there. About the same color. Um, and also goes well with the yellow in the flowers. So as long as your color tones and everything mimic each other or accent each other, you can't go wrong when it comes to flowers. So I will get this planted and show you the results. Okay, so one thing I wanted to show you really quick is um, how I am planting these around the tree stump. Now I've put a shovel load of composted soil. Um, this is all organic that you see here. It's just beautiful. And what I am doing is I'm actually mixing it in with some of the native soils that are in here. And I do that so that once you have your perennials in here, uh, any type of permanent plants, they will actually take to the ground quicker um, if you don't spoil them right from the start with just, you know, beautiful, gorgeous, organic soil. They also need to get used to their native soils that they're actually, their roots are actually going to start expanding into as they get bigger. So I added that to the hole. And we're going to slip our perennial in there. And he wants to go. A lot of roots here on the bottom, so I just kind of loosen them up. Loosen up that root memory so it doesn't continue to keep growing in a circle. Plant them right down in here. Just like that. And some of the soil in here is real rich to start with just because it had been sitting underneath a tree for so long. There's a lot of natural mulch already in the soil. You can tell just by the color of it. See how dark it is? I haven't done anything to it. It's just something I got blessed with when I came out here. And a lot of times the soil underneath trees can be just like this because it is just sat still. And with all the needles and just natural materials falling into the soil, it's actually made it rich on its own. This is Mother Nature's work, not mine. So I just added some regular organic soil to it. I actually mixed in a little bit of Osmocote, so it has a little bit of a slow-release fertilizer to help the blooms. And then, uh, I put it into the hole and I mix it with the native soil so that the plant has a better chance of getting used to its new home. So I just wanted to show you that and moving on. All right, so the project's finished and I'm going to do a zoom in for you so that you can see the entire circumference of the pot. Um, it probably took me about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to get this completed. 
So when you have something like this in your yard, a tree stump, for example, if there's a way you can put it to use rather than having it ground out, maybe this will give you some inspiration. So here you go. I'm going to take you on a little panoramic tour.